here's funny. We are headed to milk our goat. And I... I'm not. I'm, I'm looking at you. Yeah. I have two little friends in tow. We have here and Hero. And they are quite fond of goat milk. <laughs> so it's time for the goats to get milked. They know where to go. Welcome to our goat barn. If you haven't seen our videos, we've got videos of it being delivered and setting it up and everything. Hello, Miss Gamma. Hero out. You're not allowed in here. So I thought it would be interesting, nice, wonderful to do a little video of my goat milking process. It's not the only way you can do it. There's many ways you can do things. Uh, but just what we do, one, because we do sell our goat's milk a little bit, not a ton, uh, but to a little bit of people. Just, uh, it's nice to be able to show people what they're getting, where it's coming from, what my practices are. And then um, also for other people who are considering getting milk goats, because I know when we were, I just couldn't get enough information of how to do things. And um, so I'll kind of talk you through what we've done. This is Gamma. This Gamma's a little impatient. She is the easiest milker, but she is the most spirited, aren't you? So I always start off with bringing out a little, just like a drop of soap with some warm water. Bring that out for washing their teeth. I bring out my half gallon mason jar with a lid. That way I can dump the milk in there and cover it and doesn't get dumped. And then my milking pail. I do have washcloths that I wash and then store in my cabinet out here. I have one washcloth that's always to stay dry and one that goes right in my soapy water. Um, when I first started, I had microfiber just because my cleaning rags were microfiber, so I would just bring some out here. Horrible, horrible choice for me because our flooring is um, like bedding, but there's also hay and stuff like that. So anytime that I would drop one or they would knock it off, uh, then it's just picked up every ounce of bedding. It's terrible. And I don't want to run it through my washer like that. So I always get everything out that I'm going to need to start off with. I don't like my milk pail where they're at though. She is spirited. And then what we feed them is in equal amounts we have chose to do whole wheat whole oats and whole barley in equal amounts and our girls get a pound to a pound and a half of grain each milking uh, beta usually gets a little bit more than gamma because beta is a little bit harder for me to milk so she takes longer and she does not stand well without food so each of our girls, this will be betas. I've measured this out on the scale. Two full scoops of these for us is a pound and a half of grain. Gamma will get a little less because she can milk a little bit quicker. Yeah, she's crazy. And then I also give them a little bit of alfalfa pellets. Their hay that we feed them is alfalfa but it just kind of adds a little bit more product to what they're eating while I'm milking. Slows them down so I can get their milk. Man, she's crazy. She is ready. I also give them black oil sunflower seeds. No strict amount, but kind of ends up looking like that much. The main thing that I pay attention to is the amount of grain I'm giving them because you can overgrain them. Um, the alfalfa pellets isn't a big fuss and the black oil sunflower seeds they don't get that much of. So now it's almost your turn, girl. It's almost your turn. I do not dump all of her food in the bowl because she is so wiry that she gets half of it dumped on the ground if I'm not careful. All right, miss. Very ready, yes, you are. All right, Beta, you stay back. 
No. No, 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 no. You stay back. You're extra hungry. You can get some. Come on, here. Go on. And you ch chug that down. I'll have to get you some more. Okay, so I usually start off by brushing them just to remove their loose hair. Means less of it gets in the milk. Take my warm soapy water. She says, I'm out of food. Wash their udders and teats. Everything nice and clean. Dry rag. You are ready for your milk, girl. All right, you ready? I'll give you some more of your food now. There you go. She is such an easy milker. She has nice big teats and so when I grab her teat goes here and I pinch that keeps the milk in there and then re squeezing it out with my other fingers. When I first started with the goats, I did an iodine rinse with them instead of the hot soapy water. It was just, just barely enough iodine in the water to um, color the water. And I don't know if that's what did it, but Beta ended up having sores on her udders and um, we were afraid it was gonna turn to staff, never did, but I quit using the iodine because a friend told me that iodine can quickly dry their skin out. So, you know, kind of reserve the iodine for if there is more of an issue. And so I quit doing that, put triple antibiotic ointment on it, which in our case was just Neosporin. And then I had also bought an udder balm that had antibiotics in it as well. And so I just, each time I milked her, kept it covered, and I swapped back and forth between the Udder Balm and the Neosporin, and it did heal up really quick. But since I have quit using the iodine, that may have not been the issue, but I will say, since I've quit using it, we have had no other skin issues. When I first got them, they also had lice, which is super common for goats to get. Um, in fact, if they, when the lice jump on a human, they don't stay there. They are strictly uh, interested in animals. And so it wasn't much of a threat to me, but I will say when I sit here and I milk my goats and then I go in and I feel bugs crawling, I think I just sprayed myself, uh, and I feel bugs crawling in my hair. I don't like that. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of that. And so I got diet, I, we use diatomaceous earth with our chickens. And so I, this was all fresh bedding in here. I went ahead and dusted it with diatomaceous earth. And then I dusted all the goats as well. And I will say they were itching quite a bit too. So it was bothering them as well. So she's done. I usually massage her a little bit, try and get the last little bit. Uh, but once they were dusted within a couple of days, I noticed the itching stopped and um, the little creatures in my hair stopped jumping on me while I was milking and it was a quick painless process to get rid of. Now I always dump my milk in a jar with a lid because yeah I dumped over because I'm messy. Either I'm gonna spill it or they're gonna kick no, it and I'm spill about, it. I'm talking about the amount. Oh I yeah. thought you were laughing because it went over the edge. Not quite a half gallon, but just shy of a half gallon off the one go. There's that just shows. Half of a half gallon. Normally, she'll get about a half gallon per go. We're so a little late this morning. We're a little late this morning. No, 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 no. Half of a half gallon per go. Yeah. Not a half gallon. Half no, of a half work. gallon. Right. Um, I always use this. This is a uh, teat disinfectant. It's actually supposedly for cows, but I just give them a little spray when they're done. And we've had no trouble. And this might be a little bit of a corral because she's ready to get in here. Hold on, girl. Hold on. She just wants her hay. She likes to get a bite of hay and bring it in with her. Go ahead. She takes a parting gift. No, Beta. Beta girl, you're over there. Yep, there you go. She took your gift. Here. Hey, 
Hey, baby. Here, Gamma. Here you go. You want it? You can carry it yourself? Okay. Whoopsies. Sorry about that. Grab it. There you go. Okay. Go on. There you go. Go on. One more step. <sighs> now, beta is a little bit tougher. I honestly feel like I have to race her because if she beats me, then she just jumps all around. Yeah, that's... Well, I was just trying to brush her. Come on. Come on. No, come on, Beta. Come on. There you go. There you go. I try and give her just a little bit to start so that I can get her ready and I'm not wasting her precious eating time while I'm not actually milking. Okay, there's that dry rag. That's dirty now. Now her teats are smaller and so I cannot do a typical grab on her very easily. So my left hand is a normal, oh, you ready? My right hand is literally more so just my thumb and my uh, pointer finger. And that's just something that I had to figure out that worked because ultimately she is a good milker. She stands fine as long as she has food. She produces a good amount of milk, but I was ready to swap her out because I'm new at this and I was struggling, seriously struggling, uh, to get her emptied. And you wanna get them emptied or you're gonna give them mastitis. And I was really struggling for a few days. Thank the Lord she did not get mastitis. But I did have the ability as I tried and tried again to milk her to develop a little bit of a different hold on her and it's worked. So this one I literally just do this, at least until I can get her drained off a little bit and then I can use um, a left hand hold on her that will work well. But if I grab her regularly, like it's just her teeth up in my hand, I can't squeeze and release well. But she's a really sweet goat. She just gets feisty when it's time to eat. So this is what I do every morning and every evening. Usually takes me probably probably 30 minutes from start to finish of getting their soapy water and jar ready, coming out getting them fed. Usually I don't have as much fuss getting them on the stanchion. They just, um, we ran late this morning and so they were like, hey, you are late for an important date and they were extra feisty. But usually it's a rather peaceful environment for them. Now, I try and be careful because if anyone's going to move, it's always beta. And if they put their hoof in this milk, some people might keep it. If that hoof goes in my milk, I dump it. I just, I can't, uh, I can filter out hair, debris, bugs, that kind of thing. But we consume our milk raw and I cannot filter out um, bacteria from the poop and mud that she's stepped in, so. My hands get tired. Holding like this really kicks my butt. Now our stanchion, I do not know size-wise if it's a typical size but I feel like it's a little bit wider than normal. Um, Glenn built this for me and I like it this width because I have room to sit on it right by the goats. Uh, I find that if I'm sitting in a chair and having to lean in more, then it kind of spazzes my back a little bit. It's like a muscle that I'm not used to using leaning like that. So I prefer this. Junior says, is that milk ready yet? Yeah, I think she's trying to get to oh my gosh. 
through the fence. When I first started, I had milk spraying everywhere. Now I will still miss the bucket on occasion. Well, probably every time, but every few squirts, we'll say. Yeah, she's not done done. No, she just needs done. a little more grain. Um, but when I first started milking, I literally had to wash clothes <laughs> because I was getting I was getting milk all over everywhere. It's terrible. My bibs that I wear in the winter that you don't typically wash off and I was having to wash because they were loaded with milk. It's not like soured milk the next day. They are in here waiting for their milk. They never come oh, in here. They're, they're spoiled. They're saying you're late this morning too. They ain't got their milk yet this morning. Anything over a half gallon, I give Hero and Junior because they enjoy it. Their other cat, Fluff, she don't like the milk for some reason. She won't, she's not interested in it. But Junior loves it and Hero loves it. So. All right, we are pretty well done here. Just make sure. The last little bit. No, you don't, girl. Well, I massaged her. She's letting down a little bit more. She'll be done in a second. I'm done. Yeah, she's done. I'll give her her little spray down and then I will clean off my stanchion and we'll get to filter in our milk. I kind of messed up. So before I realized that Gamma was just going so wild for her feed and knocking half of it down, uh, I was giving her her, her full scoop. Well, now I only give her part of the scoop, but she knocked half of it down. And so one time I let her go down there and eat so it wasn't wasted. Well, now they know it's there and they keep trying to get it. But Beta thinks she has to get everything that missed the bowl. <coughs> Come on, miss. Come on, miss, miss. Come on. Come on. Come on. So this is probably different than most people. It's not necessary, but I do like my stuff clean. I am a messy milker and I have some milk on my stanchion that I don't want to come back and have bugs on and sit and stuff. So I have a water vinegar mixture that I keep out here. I always spray down my stanchion, especially when it's muddy. I mean, I do this every time anyhow, but especially when it's been raining out here, their hoofs get muddy. I like to use this rag because it's already wet. Um, Hero, you're in the way. It makes the stanchion all muddy and I'm just not a fan. I know it's livestock. I don't like it. So it makes me happy to quickly wipe everything down. So I do. But uh, for those of you who don't know, vinegar is a more natural, gentle, um, uh, I guess, sanitation option. You can sanitize things with it. I'm not a huge fan of bleach, so I try to avoid it unless absolutely necessary. So I use vinegar. And that is that. Now we'll go inside and put our milk through the strainer and get it in the fridge.
They got extra milk today because we milked like, go on. Go on. Hero, you're so patient. There you go. <clears throat> That's a lot of extra milk today. We'll, we'll leave him outside today for a while. Hero's an inside dog, so but he's gonna stay outside for a little while just in case the oh, I know just the tummy. This is our drop station of the kitchen. It's real. We had kind of a busy morning, so everything hasn't gotten clean cleaned and including my milk jugs i brought some downstairs but i get this one ready really yeah i wash these things a million times On my birthday. Okay. Well, I'm not ready to have this done here still too. Well, things didn't get washed last night. They got rinsed. I never leave milk setting. I will rinse it out. Our hot water gets unbearably hot, so I'll rinse it off really well with hot water if I can't get to it right then to clean it. So these are small little filters. That get set just like so. I use my vinegar water to sanitize in our kitchen as well. Glenn hates the smell of vinegar, but I like that it's a good it's a good way to disinfect my counters. I can use it everywhere. Okay, now we're set. And I just start. This first dump I always spill a little bit. I didn't. That's a surprise. And then that'll filter from there. Got quite a good dump there. <clears throat> and then I uh, stick a sticky note on it with the date and put it in the fridge. And then uh, we have found that our goat's milk will stay fresh tasting for up to seven days. At that seven day mark is when ours started tasting goaty. Nothing bad or curdled or anything like that. It just started having a typical goat milk flavor. But anywhere day one through day six, in our experience, it's been very fresh and delightful. Thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe our videos so you can see any future uploads. Have a good day.